Women Leadership Development, WILID, a non-government organization, would like to present what was observed in the 2016 elections. Two national resistance movement party flag bearers and four independent candidates were interviewed. My name is uh, Isala Eragu Veronica Bichetero. I represent the people of Kaberamaido County. I also come from the mighty party of the National Resistance Movement, commonly known as NRM. My name is Robina Bremelakoja. I'm the MP for Goma West. I'm a directly elected MP. I represent NRM. Uganda Patriotic Movement. That's the party I finally stood in. My name is Stella Nanyonga Njuba. I come from Nangabo, sub county. My name is Hilda Akabuai, formerly contested in the Toroma County, that is in Katakui District. My name is Olga Ajiri Ruchogoza, recently contested for the main seat of Nakara Division. I, I was not able to go in as the flag bearer, but then I also felt there were some things that did not go very well in the way that were organized. When I lost the NRM card is when I decided to go to Uganda Patriotic Movement. Going for that general seat, I was making a statement. And to be honest with you, I didn't feel that any party was resonating with the issues that I was bringing about in Akawa. And so I ran as an independent. So there is an independence that moves with that, that you move according to your own program. But there's a loneliness that comes with it. Yes, the party was a factor. Uh, the president came in and uh, campaigned with us. On 18th February 2016, the Republic of Uganda had its general elections. How the citizens voted in a multi-party system? I voted them like somebody I knew. I voted them like somebody I knew. I voted them like somebody I knew. How would you assess your preparedness? Mentally and physically prepared. In terms of uh, other factors, the finances, you can never be prepared for finances. I was prepared, but there are some corners I was not prepared for. What worked for the contestants during the campaigns? Being uh, a woman, and the first woman, the very first woman to contest under that position in that, in that constituency. So people got excited, and they were singing my name. I wasn't scared because of one thing, because I thought I had something to tell these people. After I lost in 2011, I did not disengage from the people. I was using my feeder skills to talk to the women and the youth, and I worked on those for him, you know? Maybe that was the practice that I was having for this time of mine. That's about 20 years ago, eh? I was given 20 million to reach people. If you can't feed them, when the, the, you are with them. What about when you leave and you are no longer there? The public was supporting women leaders to come out and contest for various positions. What challenges did you face? It was foreign for a young woman like me to be running against the Attorney General. You were up against uh, a Goliath. I was vilified for being a woman going for a male or men's seat. It was being ring fenced as such. And uh, I remember at one time they were like, I don't, I don't have pants, the trousers, enough to, to, to measure up with my male counterparts. What people expect from you, it, that becomes overwhelming. And someone will say, now, madam, how are you going to be helping us? Me, I am a widow, I have eight children, and they are not in school. I 
could get threats such nights. Much as it, it is talked about that there should not be voter bribery, the government doesn't stretch its hand. Because to these people it's not bribery, to these people it's a means of survival. What mattered is that 1,000 shillings that they received at the last moment. Citizens of Uganda needed civic education to make informed decisions. I had to spend a lot of time doing what I shouldn't have been doing. One was civic education. Every single space I walked into, I was explaining what's the role of an LC3, What's the role of an LC1 and 2? I was explaining the role of a mayor. I was explaining the role of an MP. I was explaining the role of um, the city council. I was also explaining the role of a minister. So civic education needs to stand to start now outside of an election. They have no clue what we are looking for when we say here are the people who are standing. I found myself actually, apart from uh, trying to seek for votes, educating these people. I became like, you know, someone that was doing voter education. I even had to tell them how they are supposed to vote. If the people do not have knowledge, it's very clear that there is no civic education. Based on the experience, what was recommended? Women need to be sensitized, to know that they are free to stand for every position. We take gender, appreciating gender for granted. But I think when people appreciate it, I mean, there'll be more appreciation and acceptance, accommodation of the women in this political space. When we learn what does a woman bring on the table and what does a man bring on the table and how does a man think and how does a woman think, when you learn to appreciate all of that, then nothing becomes a problem. If we don't do anything at an early age to correct the wrong things or the wrong thinking, that wrong thinking is feeding the vacuum. We still need sensitization of both men and women. And these people are productive, they can do so much. So for voter education, for civic education, those who have the mandate, those of us who are leaders, those of uh, the, 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 our parties and what have you, we have no excuse. We have to go and impart this knowledge to our people. Many challenges were highlighted in the 2016 general elections, but for electoral democracy to develop in Uganda, there is an urgent need of civic education to be fully undertaken by all stakeholders and duty bearers.